Hello and welcome! In today's video I'm going to show you the rest of what I received because I did have Christmas with my oldest son and his wife just this last weekend and they did give me a few art supplies and then we will revisit a previous art supply and play with that today and you can see some of that right here. And the reason I have this big arches pad out is because this is part of my big watercolor project. Ta-da! And so we'll be using it today. These are the wonderful new art goodies I received from my son and daughter-in-law. They also got me a, I don't know, eight pack, I think, of puzzles, which is gonna be super fun. Thomas Kincaid, beautiful artwork, right? So I have explored Neo Color 2's Derwent Aquatones and other water-soluble crayons on this channel before, and I saw these on Amazon, and I put them on my wish list like a year ago, and I just kept waffling. Do I really want these on my wish list? Do I not? But I left them on there because praying sometimes has really nice products, and I thought it could be fun to try them, and I didn't even realize it, but this comes with a brush. So I kind of want to try these today too. Maybe we will. Maybe we'll have a multi tryout day in this video, we'll see. And the second thing is this Pentelic Aqua Journal. Now this is something that I believe Maggie over at Creating Cute Art just loves and it was because of her recommendation time and time again that I put this on my wish list. And it's really neat so far. It is not cotton paper, but every page that I have flipped to, and trust me, I have played with this a lot, just flipping to various pages, lies very flat. It's very impressive, and I just said very a lot. I'm really good at that. <laughs> so anyway, it'll be fun to try, and even if the paper is frustrating for me with regular watercolor, although she says it's not, she says it's great, I will use it for gouache or ink or, I don't know, It's and it's hefty, holy moly. It's 48 pages, has a place for a pen up there, or paintbrush could be a water brush. And the thing that I thought we were gonna explore the most today in this video would be these Paul Rubens precipitating paints. And I did open them up already. I showed them to you that day I received them. So this was in a previous video and I'll link that up in the corner for you. But you can tell that I have squeezed some out already and I've put them in those full pans, which you see right here and did label them. Got a little smeared, oops. So I thought it would be fun to see how they rewet. Sometimes paints like this are harder to rewet, so it just seems like a fun experiment. Because I'm going to swatch these anyway, that's why I have my big watercolor project paper down here. If I'm gonna swatch them, might as well do it the big way the first time. What is my watercolor project, you might ask? Well, I need to create a library of all my paints. That's my goal anyway because I want to do a long-term no-buy and my example that I gave you before was if I run out of a yellow, I can come in here and find a similar yellow. Like let's say I run out of this Windsor yellow. And I'll be like, well, the next closest yellow in my library would be this Da Vinci Aerolite yellow. So I would use that one instead of purchasing a new Windsor yellow. That's the idea. Not only that, it's kind of fun to see all these colors in here and to just compare them. I got really fascinated with all the reds in particular. You can see just how red that Da Vinci red is and I think that's gonna become a big part of my life in the future. That's a beautiful red. And I also have it in the big palette that Kimberly Crick gave me. So I do have quite a bit of Da Vinci red and that makes me very happy because it's a beautiful color. So that's the big watercolor project. All right, so what I'm thinking, it would be really fun to just break this in why not? Let's do the first page. That first page is the same paper as the rest of the book. So, and it also lies flat and it goes clear across to this side over here. I think I'll leave that side for like my name and stuff like that. I, although it wouldn't hurt to have some of this color on it. So we could put some of this on there for some color. That might actually be kind of nice. So what I enjoy doing lately is cutting out the information of the sketchbook itself and then just taking some kind of archival tape and taping this in here. So I'll probably put that maybe up there. This is the tape that I'm going to use today. It's a little overly strong for this application. If you have a scrapbooking tape gun, like those little handheld ones that you go boop boop like that, those work really well too, but I'm not sure. I do have some and I got some refills from my grandma's house, but I'm not sure where all that is and don't wanna go look for it right now. So. We'll just use this, tape that in there, no big deal. This stuff's kind of expensive, so you wouldn't wanna use this as an alternative all the time. <laughs> but 
it'll be okay one time. Plus this stuff is getting old, so it probably is good for me to use it up. And I did find a few more of these at my grandma's house that I'll bring home eventually. So that score tape is double-sided. You stick it down on whatever you want and then you pull off the second side and it is a really strong bond. I actually used it on my coffee cup here. This is somewhat of a rough surface, so to speak. And my husband put this really cool sticker on it for me. It is a mock-up of one of our friend acquaintances Jeep that's really cool. But the sticker didn't want to stick to this surface. So I just put that score tape over here and over here and it sticks great now. It's probably more information than you guys want to know about all this stuff, but that's okay. Okay, so that has that information in it now. Let's check out the brush. Praying. Pretty nice, actually, quite usable. It's got a couple of bent hairs on it from whoever did this in the factory putting this plastic on, but can either cut them off or maybe they'll lay down when I get water on them. So the one with the white, I'm going to go ahead. Yeah, I, I'm debating if I should really use this page for this or not. I think so. I don't see any reason not to. Okay, so we'll do the white one there in a minute. And then we have so they're very stiff, very hard. Well, this one's a little smoother. That one's not quite as stiff. I have no idea how old these were either. I mean, they could have been in the Amazon listing for a long time as far as I know. This little holder, cat just knocked my painting off over there. This little holder isn't working for this one. Too big for it. Kind of neat that they come with these little holders though. I think she's gonna knock more stuff off. I should probably go get her. <laughs> this orange first. Ooh, that orange is pretty. I'll go back and do that white in a bit. I just wanted to give it some time. Yeah, so these don't all work for the holders all that well. And I think maybe this light blue next. Is it a light blue? Not really, but it's pretty. Just guessing at these colors here. Dark ones are always a little harder to tell, right? I think I did it right though, at least in the order I like to do things. So these definitely are not as soft and creamy and beautiful to use as the Marabou Art crayons or the Neo Color 2s. They do remind me more of the pencil type of water soluble crayon, so to speak, except in that case it would be a pencil. So a lot stiffer. That's an off white, very creamy white. All right, we'll get some water on the subject. Try and get that one off. Okay, should be good. Put that up so the studio light doesn't glare on you. Ooh, okay, I expected to be disappointed with these actually, but I'm kind of impressed so far. I just didn't expect it to dissolve like that, you know? I just thought it would be streaky. Okay, so the pink is tougher. Hmm. You can still get it to dissolve completely. It's just very light. Interesting. I wonder if the streaks would stay more on cotton paper because this is, you know, you notice on cellulose paper how things do tend to stay more on the surface. Could be an advantage for this type of medium. So yeah, you have to go over it a bit to get them to dissolve completely, but they're a lot more vibrant than I expected. I'm kind of happy with this. <laughs> that was too much water. It's all right, it worked. I had to work a bit at that one and it's a little streaky now. Ooh, this one's pretty. I had a feeling it would be. This one looks like it has a little purple in it. It's kind of pretty. Oh shoot, my dog wants in. Just a minute. Two more to go. He can wait, he can wait, right? Ooh. So some of these are definitely stronger than others. Okay, hang on puppy. Wow, this black is amazing. Probably could have fun just with this black. So I kind of like to just break in a sketchbook just by barreling right in and doing something with it because it just seems like once you get that first bit of color down, then it's no big deal to use. But I've also, because of going through my art career, if that's what you want to call it, with you guys here on YouTube, you just open up a sketchbook now and use it, right? For me, it's less intimidating than it ever used to be. There is that. All right, so when did I get this? I have no idea what the date is. I never know the date. January 9th, 23. We have to remember the three there instead. Who knows when I'll finish this. 48 pages is a lot. So while we have this sketchbook open, let's just flip over here and use these over here. Oh, no, let's not. Not yet. Hold that thought. It's like, if we're just gonna swatch, I need to swatch on my big paper here because I don't want to waste paint and do it more than once, you know? So you can see I've tried to block off areas, but 
I reuse my tape and I can reuse it two times very successfully. Three times is kind of pushing it. This tape is probably on its last use, but you have to use, I have to use so much tape for this project that I definitely try and reuse it, but ugh, it's just a lot. Okay, we'll protect some of this with the cloth that has lots of cat hair in it. Okay, so this first one's gonna be PBK11 and PB29. I wanna feel these. These have been in here for five days, I think. Just gonna dab some water in these. I don't know if they need it or not. It looks like their paint is coming up just fine, but better safe than sorry. And then the usual way I do swatching for this project is I put water from the black line down and then take the paint. Yeah, there's a lot of paint coming off on the brush. You can probably see that but it doesn't feel like a lot. So it'll be interesting to see what it looks like here. Ooh, okay, that's great. That is awesome. Not only awesome, but look how pretty. That's beautiful. All right, I didn't have my salt ready, but oh, luckily it's right here. I put salt up the right side. So these are supposed to be heavy granulating or they call them precipitating colors. So it'll be fun to see how that separates as it dries. This next one is a black and a blue, PB15. Didn't have very much water in that one and it's kind of catching my brush, kind of sticking to it. Let's see what that looks like, I'm so excited. Ooh, so dark. I don't, it doesn't even feel like I'm getting that much paint on the brush and it's that dark, that's pretty cool. So obviously it probably doesn't need wet ahead of time, but it will help clearly. So these are all colors you can make yourself. Obviously you just have to have the PBK11 and then you mix it with any other color you want basically. And you can get these really cool things going on. I was gifted a tube of PBK11 by one of you and I haven't played with it yet, <laughs> but it's in my list and it's on my mind. So PG7 is with the PBK11 in this one here. So dark, I love it. Oh, now the cat's gonna come help me. Nope, you can't drink that. Really gotta watch them. I now have water containers in here that have lids that I can put on them if I have to walk out of the room. So that's been really handy because I used to, when I left the room, take my water containers with me and just put them in a place the cats couldn't get to them, but now I just slip a lid on them, which is nice. So this is PBK11 with PV23. And yeah, the water pretty much dried up in that one. I probably needed more water on my brush, but this is gonna be pretty, I can tell already. So dark when it's on its own before it hits the water, so dark. May need more water than I'm using here to see the actual beautiful granulation that we can achieve. So maybe we'll do that in that Pentalic sketchbook over here. We'll just add like big puddle of water and see what it looks like when we add the paint. It's gonna be pretty. And then maybe we could just make something out of whatever random design we have, that'll be fun. So this one is PBK11 with PY110. Ooh, yeah, that one came right up. <laughs> that is such an ugly color, but I kind of like it. <laughs> That would be great for moss. I don't know, probably that's all I can think of right now is like moss, trees, not really trees, more moss. These are cool. I knew I would have fun with these. Last one, these only come with six. There's two different sets. One is a precipitating and one is like a, I don't know. This is PR254 with PBK11. Wow, that's dark. My tape's coming up over there. One of the Side effects of reusing your tape as much as you can. Doesn't always stick down. That's why these are separated from each other this time because I knew the edges would be a little bit compromised. But don't worry, I use all these in between scraps in my arches paper. Definitely do. We'll let those dry. Get this sketchbook back out. We'll grab this hockey brush. Try not to drip water over our swatches up there, but let's add a lot of water to this. That's pretty much a lot. It's staying on the surface for now quite a bit. So we'll kind of do a rectangle, get some kind of semblance of a shape, basically. I'm trying to hold it down with my hand so it doesn't warp too much. I'm gonna grab a tiny bit more water even though it really doesn't need it. Let's drop some of these paints in there. Like, let's just do some of all of them. First one. 
Oh yeah. Second one. I have a feeling in the future this is probably going to be my favorite page in the sketchbook. <laughs> Trying to hold the page down and dip into my pans over here. It's, it's a little difficult. <laughs> oh, oh, wow. Oh, gosh. That, uh, that one's pretty spectacular. Ah, I want to dip purple in there, but I love what's going on right there, so I'm not going to touch that one. I'll do it over here. I want to get a little bit, I know we got two more colors there, but I want to get more of that first one going on. Drop some more up there, and I want to get some of it down here. Oh my goodness. What is this magic? Okay, let's grab some of this ugly green. Green, yellow. Oh, that's, that's a lot. And this last one, which is really pretty. Holy moly, these have quite the payout. Okay, I want to get a little more of the green. And I'm not going to add any salt or anything. I want to see how this dries all on its own. And it looks like I'll either have to find a way to hold this paper down or I'll have to sit here and hold it down till it dries. <laughs> I have a clip right here. I just don't think it's big enough. Oh, I can't lift this either because all that water. Hmm. Maybe if I just do a couple, almost all the pages. Okay, we're going to let that dry. And this particular little time lapse section is 11 and a half minutes. So I have sped you through 11 minutes, 28 seconds worth of dry time. And then I come back and talk to you because I got a problem. All right, with these puddles, this is going to take a couple decades. So I kind of wanted the puddles to dry on their own. I just don't think that's going to work for the time I have today. So I hate to do it, but we're going to have to... Why is this not soaking up? Maybe I need like an actual paper towel. I still don't have paper towels in my studio. Yeah, this is not pulling anything up. I'm going to go find a paper towel. Here it goes. Oh, I hate to do that. Really wanted to see what it was going to be like on its own. It's just like this one over here is really thick. What? Why is there cat hair on those paper towels? Those weren't even near cats. Erg. I think this will be okay. Not affecting it too much. We might still see some cool stuff. And this little time lapse section is 10 minutes and 5 seconds. And at first it didn't look like it was lightening up much, but through this time lapse you can see that it does lighten up a little bit. Not too badly, but a little bit. Okay, I think this is dry enough. So let me get you up close and personal. So here we are. What do you guys think? I think it's beautiful. I really love how that extra water up there caused that background into the paint area a bit right there. It's pretty cool. And then here are the swatches. So they are less interesting with less water although these had quite a bit of water just not as much as the one we just used right there so it occurred to me that we need to try this on cotton paper so let's do pretty much the same thing on cotton paper and see what it looks like real quick before we do the cotton i did notice a weird streak right here on this one it almost looks like oh you just have a hair in there but it's not a hair it's some kind of weird line so i'm curious if we have maybe a page or two with one of those tiny little defects on it it'll be interesting to see as we continue to use this sketchbook this is warped quite a bit let me zoom you out here quite a bit but it will flatten right up i'm sure when this sketchbook gets closed up but i'm gonna wait because we still have a little bit of wetness here and it just needs to fully dry before i close it up all right here's a little arches block this is eight by ten thought it'd be the perfect size going through quite a bit of this little eight by ten one and that means that it's a very useful size and it'll be sad when it's all used up. But let's do the exact same thing. We have the same hockey brush here. I'm really quite taken with these so far. Ooh, gonna create a nice hard edge there because I went just outside of the water. That's gonna be pretty. It's gonna look like a mountain or something. Ooh, this would make great mountains. Do a hard edge like that with water underneath. Mm-hmm. So there's some hard chunks in some of these here and there. So like I said, I'm pulling more pigment out of each of these. 
it is pulling some more of that separation stuff. We're going to see how this dries. And this particular time lapse was over 11 minutes in 28 seconds. So I've put that down into about 12 to 13 seconds here for you. So you, hopefully you get to have a good idea of how that worked out. Okay, while we're still waiting for this down here to dry, I thought I could pull some tape off of this upper one. So I leave a half inch on the bottom and I have to leave this last swatch there so we can use that still. I leave a half inch on the top to write all my information. Okay, yes, those are quite pretty. Go ahead and take this tape off too so you can see that since I really can't use this tape one more time. It barely kept to the edges this time. Delete that one because I'm going to use that swatch sheet square over there. They look quite different in the swatches versus when they can really granulate out. But we get the idea. We get the color idea. We get a little bit of the granulation idea, but not like this paper here. I'm kind of liking this little experiment. The nice thing is this will tell me obviously what the colors look like and if I want to use them in any sort of painting. So that'll be great. I can definitely see that they would be really fun in some kind of mountain painting. So I don't have time to do that today, which is quite sad, <laughs> but I'm going to add that to my very long to-do list because I definitely want to try it. It's going to, I think, look quite beautiful. Like maybe some kind of granite type of mountains or even partial winter mountains, you know, so you have like snow on one side and then some of the stone on the other side. I have some winter picture references that I have printed out that might actually work really well for these types of paints. So I do need to label these while I still have them in the order here, but what I am going to do, and since I have this video, I can refer to this back in case I get confused, but I have this little palette here that I made originally when I did my DIY granulation video, and I'll link that for you in the corner because I did as many granulating DIYs as I could without having PBK11 and it was shortly after that video that I was sent that tube of PBK11. I did end up putting a bunch of other random paints in here too, some of Van Gogh paints that I received. But these are the only remaining like granulating DIYs I still have. I think I put the others in my Prodigal Sons palette because they are highly granulating also but I can make this my Paul Rubens granulating palette. And I just sprayed the inside of this cute little palette with appliance white, just literally a spray can of appliance white. You can buy that at the hardware store. So anyway, what I'll do is I'll put these in here. I'm just gonna put them in exact order right now so I don't get confused up there. All six of these will fit. And then I think, I'm hoping there'll be room for these three. Uh, it's not looking good. <laughs> so close, so close. That actually probably, no, it doesn't quite close. Can't quite fit them all in yet without, yeah, it's just that curve, darn it. This is not fully dry, so it hasn't flattened out yet. Oh, look, I have that, like, a same little line on this paper. I wonder if some of the grains in this paint, remember how I told you, see, it has some granules? I wonder if they scratch the paper. Now, that one is a hair. I can't get that out until this fully dries because it will smear the paint. That one's a hair, but that one is another scratch. Interesting. Well, let me pull these over side by side. I think that would be fun for you to see these side by side. All right, so this is what they look like side by side, but they look very similar. I don't see a huge difference on the cellulose versus the cotton paper. If anything, I would say that the granulation is more apparent on the cellulose paper. They're both beautiful so far, but let's see what they're, they're like when they're fully dry and we'll go from there. Instead of fighting with this cute little tin that I already sprayed with appliance white and it's ready to go, but the things don't fit, <laughs> I just got the bigger Altoids tin out so I will use this for these for now. I do have this Da Vinci empty watercolor tin, but I have other things that I might want to use this for. And this kind of fits nicely. And I looked at my swatches and this, the Schmincke PR-108 with the Core PR-108 does not really granulate. It's this middle one right here. And so I didn't want to put that in this palette. It doesn't really go, but these three are the ones that I put in there. My DIY Shire Green Volcano red mixed with Sennelier's PB15 colon three, and then this one is the Volcano Red with Coors Indigo. 
Also, what I'll be doing with the rest of this sheet here is swatching in my project manner the rest of the Da Vinci paints that are not duplicates. So I have a spreadsheet going on my computer over there that I can reference really easily so I don't have to flip through these because these are not in brand order. These are in color order. So to find all the Da Vinci's, I would literally have to go through every single card. And that's just the way I chose to do it. But that's why I have the spreadsheet as well so that I can just do a quick control F, look for a color, be good. I also have separate tabs in my spreadsheet thing for each brand, so it'll be very easy to find over on the spreadsheet. So I'll use up the rest of these swatch squares with these paints, and then I'm kind of bummed because I made my Winsor & Newton palette, you guys, with the rest of the paint, but this is a Winsor & Newton paint. This is Winsor & Newton's Payne's Gray. So now I need to find room for it in my Winsor & Newton palette, but I didn't leave room on the swatch sheet for it. What I plan on doing is hopefully this will fit in the middle. It does not, dang it. <laughs> so that'll have to be on my to-do list, dang it. All right, they're completely dry. I did a Google Translate app and I got some conflicting information, which tends to happen probably with those apps, but this one said Emperor Green on the tube, but the box said it was Moon Dusk. Moon Dusk sounds way more correct, but I had already written Emperor Green up there. Oh well. This also said Blue Daisy, but then it said something else I don't quite remember. But I'm like, Blue Daisy's fine. <laughs> I'll go by the number anyway if I want to purchase more of these ever in the future, which won't be this year, <laughs> as you know. However, as far as you guys purchasing them, I really like them. I think that it's nice to have a mix like this that's already done for you. It is fun to do your own, but these are already full tubes of absolutely gorgeous colors, so don't think you can go wrong purchasing them. I like it both on the cellulose paper and the cotton paper. What I do with these is I end up putting them in a pile, obviously not the one in the sketchbook. I'll just have to take note of that, but these ones that I can pull off to a loose sheet, I have a bunch of these kind of abstracty type of paintings, and it's on my to-do list in the future to try and make something of them. Like when I first made this, I kind of saw, or was it this one? This one, I think. I kind of saw a little bear or owl, like here's the nose, here's the eyes, the body, some wings, and then, I don't know, maybe holding something up, pushing something up, I'm not really sure, but it could be that, and then like what's over here, maybe a bird, there, there's a eye, so it could be some kind of bird-like scene. I don't do birds very often, but that's kind of what I saw in that one. So it's fun to look at these and just see if maybe you can come up with something and then use like a fountain pen. Those are really fun to use. Or like the glass dip pen that I was gifted. That one is one of my favorites. Or just something as simple as your fine liners and just draw out what you see. Sometimes you can just use paint as well and enhance certain areas. I also, like I mentioned, will be wanting to do a mountain painting with these. I think that could be really beautiful. And then as far as the praying crayons go, we'll have to do a video in the future comparing these to some of the other products I have and do an actual painting drawing with them. I think that could be something that, I don't know, could be relaxing and interesting. Well guys, thank you so much for joining me today. I hope this was as fun for you as it was for me. I've had a blast here. I'm going to really enjoy having these in my collection. I think that was a great addition, a good choice. I'm very happy with them. And I will see you guys in the next video. Bye for now. All right, these are the wonderful... <laughs> and then the thing that I thought we would explore today would Hmm. They do remind me more of the pencil. Hey, you're making noise. She's eating my carbon paper. Anyway, and then we'll have to keep these in order because they're not marked as far as I don't know what I do, what I'm saying.